welcome to another new topic today we will discuss about ultra high temperature processing of milk as you remember in the last lecture we have discussed about the pasteurization there we have discussed different methods this is little bit higher temperature processing and more advanced processing this kind of processing milk is becoming more popular especially in developed countries and this UHT processed milk is sterile and it is packed in a very special condition called aseptic packaging and this kind of processed milk can be stored in room temperature for long time. In this method we are going to discuss about the definition, principles, effect and different type of methods and how to do the packaging by aseptic methods. Let us understand the definition of UHT processing. UHT milk can be defined as a product obtained by heating milk in a continuous flow to a temperature in excess of 135 degrees Celsius for not less than one second and immediately packaging in sterile packages under aseptic conditions. In India, UHT milk is generally processed at 140 degrees Celsius for 2 seconds. So this is the definition. So here milk is processed at a high temperature for a very short time and it is packed in sterile condition called aseptic packaging. So this kind of milk can be stored in room temperature for long time. Now let us understand the principle of this processing. As we know, heating of milk results in death of microorganisms. While some bacteria are destroyed by pasteurization only, some survive this treatment. I told in the pasteurization lecture that it can kill all the pathogens but not all other organisms. And sometimes some heat tolerant organism, especially their spores can survive the pasteurization temperature that is 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. For example, Bacillus subtilis or Bacillus tearothermophila spores are very heat resistant and they can survive the pasteurization. So, Bacillus tearothermophila is taken as the index organism for evaluating the performance of UHT processing of milk. Here now we will see the effect of this UHT processing. As we know, heating of milk at higher temperature also results in undesirable changes in chemical quality, browning and therefore loss of flavor and quality. So this is well known, higher the temperature there will be all this impact. But when milk is treated in UHT range of 135 to 150 degrees Celsius for few seconds, generally 1 to 2 seconds, so this time is very less, so naturally the impact or bad effect will be very less. So in this case almost all spores get killed and loss of nutrients will be minimum because the exposure is very very short time though the temperature is very high. Thus it becomes microbiologically safe and superior in quality. Now we will learn about the methods of UHT processing or UHT heat treatment. It can be done by two ways, one is by indirect heating, another is by direct heating. In case of indirect heating, the heating medium and the milk to be heated never directly contact each other. So they are separated by the metal walls or pipes or, or plates. As we have seen in case of plate heat exchanger, there is an indirect heat transfer. Whereas there is another method that is called direct heating where the steam is injected and directly it will heat the milk. In direct UHT system there are three methods as you see in the right side diagram. First is injection heating where the milk is injected with the steam and then second is infusion heating where the milk is put into the steam. And the third option is electrical heating. By the electrical coil, the milk is heated. We will see more details about these three methods of direct heating and the other methods for indirect heating. 
Here we will see a comparison between direct type and indirect type. In case of direct, heating is done by mixing the product and the steam. Whereas in case of indirect type, heating is done by steam or hot water without the two coming in direct contact. Secondly, heating is very rapid, particularly between 80 to 140 degrees Celsius in case of direct type. Whereas in case of indirect type, rise in temperature is very gradual. Number three, the total heat load is less in case of direct type, whereas heat load on the product is more in case of indirect type. And finally, changes in product quality is minimum in case of direct type, whereas changes in chemical quality are comparatively more in case of indirect heating. Now we will see little more details as in case of direct UHT system, I told there are two methods, one is injection type, another is infusion type. In case of injection type, processing is through steam into milk arrangement. That means the steam is injected into the milk and that gives the heating and sterilization. So here the steam injector is the heart of this plant. Here the preheated milk at about 80 to 90 degrees Celsius enters the injector nozzles from one side and the steam at slightly higher pressure enters the injector from the other side. As the steam mixes with milk, steam condenses and the product is rapidly heated. So when the steam is injected into the milk, the heat from the steam is taken by the milk and milk get heated instantly. And the steam after losing the heat get condensed and goes out through the outlet. Here in this flow chart we can see the working operation in the direct system in UHT processing. We can see here that number one where the plate system that is plate heat exchanger is used for preheating and then number two where the actual injection happens that is the steam is injected and the preheated milk is going there. Number three there is a holding tube that is about one second. Number four there is a flash vessel and outside there is a cooling arrangement that is number nine. And then number five there is a aseptic homogenizer. Number six there is a again cooling system with plate heat exchanger. Number seven, there is a aseptic tank. Number eight is non-aseptic cooler. So from this aseptic tank, it goes for packaging under aseptic condition and then it is going for storage and marketing. Here is the another type of direct heating system that is infusion type. In this case, processing is through milk into steam arrangement. So steam is already there in the chamber and milk is passed into it. So the processing unit consists of a chamber filled with pressurized steam, the steam with a higher pressure. Here the milk enters the chamber from the top and after getting exposed to the steam, it gets heated and then it gets sterilized and then it goes out through the outlet. Now we will briefly discuss about the indirect UHT system. So here two kind of things our system is used. One is plate heat exchanger which we have discussed thoroughly while talking about HTST pasteurization system. And the another system is tubular heat exchanger. Here there will be one tube inside another or sometime even three tube that is also called as concentric tube. So there can be single tube or multiple tube. Multiple means at least three tubes will be there or more. And sometime the single tube there is double uh, one inside the other. And another system is scrapped surface in which there is a continuous separation of the layer of milk after heating. So we are going to discuss all this little bit in more details. So under the indirect heating system in UHT milk processing, first is the plate heat exchanger which we have already learnt in HTST system. So this resembles plate heat exchanger of HTST plants. Several rectangular stainless steel plates with corrugations are arranged in sequence 
these plates are then mechanically tightened to hold together all this we have discussed earlier and there are corrugations on the plates which induce turbulence and therefore result in high heat transfer and this corrugation gives a very extra surface area that also helps in quick transfer of heat this is another method of indirect heating system for uht processing of milk this is tubular heat exchanger this can be two type as i told earlier one is concentric tube another is cell and tube type that is the multiple tubes so in the figure below you can see the left side this is the concentric tube at the center through which the milk can pass so cold milk get heated and the outside there will be heating medium which gives the heating for the milk sometime it can be three tubes in that case the central tube will have the milk and both inner and outer tube will have the heating medium to make the heating very fast in the next diagram right side we can see this is a cell and tube type so in which the red color that is passing the heating medium or steam and it is passing through the milk and because of this high steam exposure the milk get quickly heated so there is a inlet and outlet for the milk after heating here this is the another method of indirect heat exchange that is called scrapped surface heat exchanger here it is a very specialized type of heat exchanger consists of a jacketed cylinder in this a shaft passes along the axis of the cylinder and it carries several scraper blades as shaft rotates scraper blades provide turbulence and physically remove the product from the surface of the wall so in that diagram bottom left side we can see that red color arrow that is the chamber in which the heating medium will flow and then there is a inner chamber where the milk will be there that is the cream color and that is continuously scrapped by the rotor with a shaft and scrapping device so this is how continuously it will remove the heated milk through this in the right side diagram also it is further explained about the scraper so this is a modern method for quick heating in case of uht processing here we can see the flow chart of operation in case of indirect uht system in this case it is using the plate heat exchanger that is the number 3 so 1 a and b there is the balance tank for milk and water then number 3 is the plate heat exchanger number 2 is the feeding pump for the milk then up there is a number 4 for positive pump number 5 for steam injection number 6 is the holding tube that is for 1 to 2 second number 7 is the vacuum pump and then number number 7 is the expansion chamber and number 8 is the vacuum pump number 9 is the centrifugal pump so here the mechanism is almost same as i have discussed in case of direct system finally it goes to the aseptic homogenizer at number 10 and then it goes to aseptic tank at number 11 and then finally the aseptic packaging happens in number 12 so enter mechanism or flow is similar like the direct system except the heating principle here it is plate heat exchanger is used so we have already discussed about the uht processing but along with that one important step is the aseptic packaging because the milk is already sterilized it has to be packed perfectly then only it will have the long shelf life and here the main thing is we have to avoid the post processing contamination so what is this aseptic packaging aseptic packaging can be defined as the process in which UHT processed or sterilized milk is filled in pre-sterilized containers under aseptic or sterile environment that means here the milk is already sterilized we have to use the pre-sterilized container 
and the filling into the container should happen in a aseptic room or aseptic environment or sterile environment then the product is fully sterile and it can be stored for long time so this ensures that there is no post processing contamination of the milk so that the product has longer shelf life For aseptic packaging, we need to pre-sterilize the packaging material. So that can be done by two ways, either by physical sterilization medium or by chemical sterilization medium. In the physical sterilization medium, several options are there like steam under pressure or hot water can be used, ionizing radiations that is gamma rays can be used or ultraviolet radiation uv ray that is also very good for surface sterilization that is of the packaging material or we can use dry heat that is the very high temperature of air or superheated steam so these are the options for physical sterilization of the packaging material before it is used for filling and packaging of the ust processed milk so there is chemical sterilization medium also like we can use ethylene oxide or we can use hydrogen peroxide sometimes some other suitable chemical also can be used for the sterilization of the packaging material before it is used for packaging of ust processed milk so little bit details we will explain about the hydrogen peroxide here little bit more details about the chemical medium for sterilization so most commonly hydrogen peroxide so this is most popular sterilizing agent for aseptic packaging system in case of uhd milk it is applied on the packaging surface by either dipping or spraying so we can dip the packaging material in the hydrogen peroxide or we can spray the hydrogen peroxide inside the inner surface of the packaging material the most successful combination of sterilizing medium being used in commercial aseptic packaging units are hydrogen peroxide plus heat supplied by radiant heat element so that radioactive element that gives radiation and h2o2 this combination can be used or sometime hydrogen peroxide with uv radiation also can be used these are the most common combination used commercially for sterilizing the packaging material here we will understand little bit more about the packaging material used for aseptic packaging so this kind of packaging material will have three different component so sometime we can call laminates or coextruded films it will have paper polyethylene and aluminum foil so paper layer that will have almost 70% it provides stiffness strength and the efficient brick shape that is the tetra pack shape then the second is polyethylene that will be 24% it forms the seal on the innermost layer that makes the package liquid tight and a protective coating on the exterior keeps the package dry so polythene is most important for sealing purpose it is actually polyethylene sometime we call polythene so it is very important for proper sealing and to protect the leakage and the third layer is the aluminum or aluminum foil that is about 6% it forms the perfect barrier so it don't allow anything to pass through like any liquid or oxygen and eliminating the need for refrigeration and preventing spoilage without using chemical preservative so this prevents the entry of light and oxygen so it prevents the oxidation so now we are at the end of today's lecture today we have discussed about uhd milk and this is discussed in a very briefly for the undergraduate students this is a very modern and vast topic in future i will make a further details discussion on this topic for post graduate students so today we have discussed very briefly about the uhd milk so we have discussed what is uhd milk the definition principle different methods like direct method or indirect method in direct method there is injection and infusion type of methods and in indirect there is plate heat exchanger or tubular method or scraping surface method and further we have discussed the importance of packaging because it is a sterilization process so it has to be packed perfectly under aseptic condition 
and when the proper sterilization and aseptic packaging is done that is the UHT milk it can be stored at room temperature for a long time so this is the speciality so this is briefly about the UHT milk and in future we will make a more details lecture on this topic thank you